Good morning and welcome to the Presbyterian Church of Willingboro on this August morning. We are so glad to have you with us today and to welcome Cody Richards back as worship leader. Good to have you with us too. Thank you. Wonderful to see you all restored to health and all the rest of it. So we are excited this morning to worship God together. At this time, I want you to make whatever sign is appropriate in the space where you are worshiping this morning, but we will exchange God's peace. Here we do jazz hands, jazz hands. Let us prepare our hearts for worship. Speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ from whom the whole body joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. Let us now hear the call to worship. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I just wanted to, ooh, a little close to the mic. Sorry, everyone. Uh, we had a little bit of feedback because the speaker was a little too close to my mic. Um, I want to say thank you to everyone that has been praying for my recovery. Uh, I did receive a COVID test on Thursday and wanted to let everybody know that it is a negative result. And I'm very, very happy to be back here at the church with all of you, with Pastor. Uh, 
it's been uh, it's been kind of lonely on Sunday, to be honest, uh, not being here, and I'm so glad to be here with you all today. Uh, if you'll join me in the call to worship. Oh Lord, open my open our lips. And our mouths to declare your praise. Restore us, O oh God, to the glory to the joy of your salvation. And sustain us with the Holy Spirit. Let us make a joyful noise. Let us worship God. And we will start with our own hymn of reproach. 417. Christ is made the shore of foundation. sent the Son into the world to shine the light of his truth into our hearts and set us free from the darkness of despair. Let us confess our sin and open ourselves to God's gracious forgiveness in Jesus Christ. Please join me in the unison prayer. Lord, you have called us to be light for the world, yet we often find ourselves hiding this light selfishly keeping it to ourselves. You present us with many ways to do your will and to share your word of truth with those who need it desperately. Why do we remain silent? Why are we afraid to speak? How can we, who are children of grace, refuse grace to others? Help us to hear your call to repentance. Turn, Turn our hearts, hearts back, back to you. you. Give us yes, courage and determination that we may share your truth and love to the world. Children of God, Christ has poured grace upon grace over us. Receive Christ's grace in all its fullness and believe the good news of God. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Before we dive into today's scripture lesson, 
uh, I'd like to I'd like for you to join me in the prayer for illumination. Holy Spirit, dispel our darkness, pierce the clouds of nature's night. Come, O source of joy and gladness, breathe your life and spread your light. Amen. So this morning's first scripture lesson is taken from the book of Psalms. Psalm 51, uh, verse, uh, starting at the beginning and going through verse 12. Listen now for the word of God. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love. According to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight so that you are proved right when you speak and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Surely you, excuse me, surely you desire truth in the inner parts. You teach me wisdom in the inmost place. Cleanse me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out my iniquity. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. This is the word of the Lord. Our section, second scripture continues our study of Paul's letter to the church at Ephesus. We will begin in chapter 4 at verse 1 and go through verse 16. Listen now for the word of the Lord. I therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit just as you were called to the one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. That each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it is said when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, what does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children, tossed to and fro, and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness in deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped. 
as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. This too is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The last time I visited my friend Edna, she was in bed, laid up with what she liked to call the lumbago. And not wanting to entertain the pastor from her bedroom, she asked me to get her slippers for her from under the bed, but to be careful as I went, not to disturb the dust bunnies resting peacefully down there in the dark. Those were her exact words. Be careful not to disturb the dust bunnies. Now, I must say, dust bunnies under the bed are not strangers to me. I know how they work. They're practically indestructible, eternal in nature and in being. Turn your back on them for a minute and they multiply like rabbits. Sweep them up today, they'll be back tomorrow. But Edna was adamant, do not disturb the bunnies. So I suckered. Okay, Edna, I asked, I'll bite. What's with the dust bunny farm under the bed? Which by the way, looks like it hasn't been disturbed in years. To which the widow Edna, 85 years young, deadpanned, Pastor, you know I'm a Bible-believing woman, and I've read that on the first day, God reached down and took a handful of dust, breathed into it, and made himself a man. You know where this is going, right? Who knows? With enough dust, hey, a woman can always hope. <laughs> Our faith claims that it is the God spark in each of us that makes what would otherwise be a collection of dust bunnies a human being. Indeed, just as Edna remembered in the second creation account in Genesis, we read that the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and the man became a living being. Not until God breathed the breath of life into this lump of dust, did it become what is named in the Hebrew a nefesh hayah, an embodied spirit, an inspirited body. Now science tells us that human beings are remarkably similar to one another, that in a strand of something like 3.4 billion pearls, of organic genetic material, my strand of pearls differs from yours by perhaps one pearl in each thousand. Faith tells us that those 3.4 billion pearls are the dust bunnies out of which we are formed, but, it, but that it is the breath of God that makes us who we are. Nefesh embodied spirit, inspirited body, human being. As Christians, we claim that it is God's breath that creates us also as the body of Christ. Just as the Ruach, the breath of God, moved across the water at the beginning of all things and brought order out of chaos, something out of nothing, so too, the breath of God moves across the waters of baptism and brings shape and form to the nothingness of our existence, the chaos of our lives. The promise is for all of us that the same breath of God, the same spirit that has made us human in the image of God will form us and reform us throughout our lives in the image and likeness of Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. One in the spirit, Paul tells us, recreated in the image and the likeness of Christ. 
Here in, in Ephesians and elsewhere in Paul's writings, Paul calls that oneness, that unity, body, a body, and not just any body, but Christ's body. The church, Paul tells us, is Christ's body. And because we trust in Christ and are made one with Christ in that trust, we are the body of Christ. By myself, I'm not the body of Christ, and nor are you. But together, we are bound inseparably by the Spirit of God, created in the image of God, each one of us someone for whom Christ was willing to die. And there was a reason why this image of the body with its overtones of organic, inseparable unity was so important to Paul and so prominent in his thinking about God and the life of believers in Christ. The church at Ephesus, to whom Paul wrote this letter, was in the middle of a fight that threatened to split the church apart, to rip this body of Christ right down the middle. They were fighting about the gifting of the spirit, about the relative coolness of the gifts, and about who was eligible to receive them. They were fighting about who should be in the circle of faith and who should be out, and who could never be in. They were fighting about doctrine and orthodoxy and righteousness. They were fighting about what it took to make the cut. They were fighting about a hierarchy of religious experience, and the winners of the fight were setting themselves up as arbiters of human value before God. We know what that's like. We do. We've seen it in our own time. Our own Presbyterian church has split repeatedly over issues of orthodoxy and practice, righteousness and doctrine. Most of us, I really do think most of us, could name a congregation shattered and broken because of the inclusion of women or LGBT, LGBTQ folks in the church's leadership or worse yet, the inclusion of guitars and drums and contemporary music in the church worship. Because you see, that's what happens when good and faithful people look around and decide that they're the only ones who have God on their side, that they're the only ones really created in the image of God, that they're the only ones whom God is profoundly for. That's what happens when good and faithful people forget that a foundational claim of the Christian faith is that all life is precious before God, inbreathed and sustained by the very same breath of the very same creator and gifted by the very same spirit exactly as the spirit of the living God chooses to do. That's what happens when good and faithful people, believers all, forget that they are gifted by the spirit, not for the exercise of privilege, not because they're better than anyone else, not because they have a corner on the truth, but always and only so that they and those gifts might be a blessing to the other guy, to the neighbor, the stranger, the one around the world, to the body of Christ and to the world that does not yet believe. That's what happens when good and faithful people created in the image of God recreated by grace alone in the image and likeness of Christ Jesus, forget that they too were once far off, enticed and led astray by idols that cannot speak. That's what happens when good and faithful people 
created in the image of God and recreated by grace in the image and the likeness of the risen Lord, forget that the power of God that binds humanity together is far more powerful than any, anything in the world that separates us. That's what happens when good and faithful people forget that the one whom they worship did not discriminate, but in his mercy ate with sinners, folks like us, ate with sinners and healed and touched the lepers and gathered in the outcasts and welcomed the alien and the stranger. That's what happens when good and faithful people forget their baptism and the truth that for the baptized, there is no longer Jew or Greek, slave nor free, male and female, for now in the kingdom of God, all are one in the spirit. We live in a day and a time and a place where those who should know better and do better daily seek to foment hatred and to divide us by race, gender, nationality, religion. You know what, quite frankly, that's just lazy. That's the lazy way, the easy way. The utterly childish, immature, and irresponsible way. Anybody, anybody can see the differences that separate us. The results of that one tiny pearl of genetic material out of a thousand. The science that tells us that makes us us. Me, me, and you, you. Anybody can see that. Anybody can name that. But, my friends, you and I are not any body. We are the body of Christ, the community of the baptized, gifted by the Holy Spirit to equip the saints for the good of the world that God sent his Son to save. A friend of mine told me not too long ago that business travel, always exhausting, is now in the age of COVID almost unbearable. The anxiety level in airports and on planes, he says, is off the charts. Suspicion and downright hostility toward our fellow passengers is the norm. And people, he said, well, people are behaving like Hungry, angry toddlers in the midst of a temper tantrum. His solution? Corny, I know, but prayer. This prayer, specifically. For every single traveler who passes his way, he repeats, this too is one for whom Christ was willing to die. One in the Spirit, one Lord, one God and Father of us all, who is above all and through all and in all. No conditions, no exemptions, absolutely no exceptions. This too is one for whom Christ was willing to die. And that, friends, is the good news that if we believe it, can change the world. Let us pray. Holy God, you have made us one in the Spirit, and yet we do our best to find a way out of that, to say that these ones over here weren't included, that these ones over here you didn't mean. Help us to remember, O oh God, that we too were once these ones over here. Help us to remember that in the grace of God and your Son, Jesus Christ, we have been adopted into your family 
that we are now children of God, children, and if children, heirs, joint heirs with Christ Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, and ask that you would give us, too, hearts of mercy and compassion, that we might remember that all of us came from that dust. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us now, friends, join together in singing our hymn of community, a servant song. We're going to sing verses one through four, and then we'll go back to sing the first one again. So it'll be five total verses, one, two, three, four, and then we'll sing verse one again. we invite you to share what God has given you by making a donation through the app Give Plus by mail to the church at 494 Beverly Rancocas Road in Willingboro or on the church's website presbychurchwillingboro.org. People of God, let us now bring our offerings and our tithes to the Lord. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for the bounty that you have showered upon us. We thank you, Lord, that we are among the lucky ones with a place to live and with enough to put food on the table, that we are among the healthy ones 
who are struggling through this season but are making it, that we are among those who have medical care available to us when our hearts, our minds, and our spirits are broken. We thank you, Lord, for all these gifts and return to you a portion of what you have given us that others, too, might know your bounty. We ask that you would take what we bring and multiply it, that it would be enough, enough to feed your people, enough to share your love. We ask all of this in the name of Jesus. Amen. We do come now to our time of prayer concerns and celebrations. First off, we do want to thank Jackie Zollner for being with us this morning and sharing her musical gifts with us. We continue to pray for Cecile on her journeys and hope that she will come home safely to us again. We also pray for all of those in our community who continue to feel the sharp bite of COVID, of this virus that has changed so much in our lives. For those who are isolated, we pray that they would have comfort and company. For those who are hurting in body, we pray that they would also be healed. And for those who are struggling economically, we know, Lord God, that in your mercy, you would desire that all would be fed. And so we ask that you would make us for them the hands and the feet of your love. Let us turn now to the Lord in prayer. God of mercy and of grace, you have spoken to us in voices loud and small. We have listened to the best that we can. We ask now that you would listen too to the yearnings of our hearts. God of truth, grace, by the strength of your voice, we have life. Listen now to the depth of our need in that life, to the cries of our hearts. Listen now to the hope of our belief that you are with us in all things. We pray for the church, O oh God. We long sometimes, Lord, for simpler days. <laughs> 18 months ago, simpler days. Days when the church could gather, when the church was a part of our daily life and routine. Days when we could be together in the flesh. Give us the grace, O oh God, as we move forward to reclaim the good that is in that memory and give us wisdom to meet the challenges of this new day to which we have come. As a congregation of your people, keep us dreaming. We want to be a voice for truth. We want to be a place of justice. We want to be a sanctuary of healing and mercy. We want to be a people of nurture where children loud, noisy, and all over the place are seen as signs of your kingdom, where noble ideals spring from your youth, where faithfulness is common amongst the adults and where the wisdom of long years is cherished, valued, lifted up. Come Holy Spirit of Christ and move among us that in these days when it is so easy not to be the church, we might continue as your brave and faithful people. And not for the church alone, O oh God, but for the world, we also pray. We long for leaders who would seek in their deliberations to do your will. Fill the leaders we have with grace and goodness and the desire to seek your face. We believe, O oh God, from our hearts that where there is no justice, there will be no peace. Give us the courage we need to do justice love kindness, and walk always in humility with you. Restore our community, our nation, and our world to a place of peace and goodwill among all people. And hear us, Lord, as we pray for those who grieve this day, for those who are anxious, those who are lonely and tired, those who are confused, those who are lost, those who do not even know how to be found. Give us grace to be answers to these prayers that we make this day. And tend the sick, Lord Jesus Christ. Give rest to the weary. Bless the dying, soothe the suffering. Pity the afflicted, shield the joyous, and all for your love's sake. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught all of us to pray, saying, our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let's join together now wherever we are in this wide world and sing a hymn of life in Christ. There's a wideness in God's mercy. joy and peace in believing that in the power of the Holy Spirit, you and I may abound in hope. Amen. <laughs> 